Hi everybody, it's Ashley and welcome to my June wrap up. I read four books this month, which is not a personal best for me. I usually read much more, um, but I had a lot going on. I had to have an outpatient surgery done a few weeks ago and one of the books that I read was really big and then there was another one that I had a very hard time getting into, but we'll talk more about that later in the video. Um, but let's jump right into it. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do my wrap-ups. This is my first one. Um, I may develop a system in the future um, when I've got more of my average wrap-up um, to discuss, like going my maybe star rating, but this time I'm just going to go by the order that I read them in. The first book that I read this month is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. And I had wanted to read this for quite a long time, but I kept putting it off, putting it off, because if you didn't know, this is Stephen King's son. And he is, Stephen King is one of my favorite authors. Um, not the favorite, but one of my favorites. And I was skeptical about this. I was afraid that Joe Hill may have been cashing in on the family name. Um, so it kept me from wanting to pick it up, even though I liked the premise. I liked the way that it sounded. And um, I had been told in a fan group that this particular book was Joe Hill's The Shining, basically. It was his masterpiece. Um, when I heard the announcement for the TV show that started in, I think it was the end of May, I decided to go ahead and pick this up and read it. And I may even do a video once the uh, series is completed, comparing the book, the differences, the likenesses, and whether or not it's ultimately worth it. Um, but if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below. Um, I ended up really, really enjoying this book. Um, it's very thick, and um, that's definitely reminiscent of his dad right there. <laughs> but um, this story follows mainly one character. There are a few different perspectives in it, but the main character, we follow her from the time she is an eight-year-old child to... A woman in her 30s. It follows a pretty hefty chunk of her life and she has discovered that she has this power per se to uh, make a bridge appear and find lost things. She discovers it by finding her mother's bracelet when she's eight years old and um, she is told at one point when she's trying to discover if she's crazy or not. She has gotten old enough to question if what she has been doing is real and um, she's trying to discover if she's crazy. So her bridge leads her to this girl who has a similar power except with her it's Scrabble tiles and they tell her things that are going to happen and she already knew about the little girl from her scrabble tiles she knew that she was coming and one of the things that these tiles tell her is the brat can stop the wraith and the wraith is a old car a 1930s rolls wraith that is being operated by a man named charlie manx who uses it to steal children and whisk them off to a place that he calls Christmas Land. And it is up to this girl, she is the only one that can stop him. Um, it follows many years, many different instances. I'm not going to say too much more about it because this is not a review. If you would like a review of this book, then let me know in the comments down below. But ultimately, I really enjoyed this book. I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, there were a lot of nods to his father's work in it, um, but it was not 
what I would call a copy. He wasn't trying to copy his dad, but there was still familiarity about it. Um, but it was a very unique story. I've never read anything like it before. And um, spoiler alert, I enjoyed it much more than the television show, which I'm still watching. I'm giving it the benefit of a doubt, but you have to have it up in mind with that. Um, but I absolutely loved this book. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars. And the only reason that I gave it a four instead of a five is because it drug a little bit in the middle. Not enough to make me put it down, but just a little bit where the action had slowed down. It didn't feel like it was um, going as full force into everything as it could have. It, it, it drug a little bit, but once it got back into the action, it was fantastic. So four out of five stars, highly recommend. And I may do a, a comparison video to the TV show if anybody is interested in that. The second book that I read this month is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This book was highly hyped on BookTube last year. And I purposely didn't read it at the time because I have found that with me personally, if I read hyped books then I tend to not enjoy them as well because I have overly high expectations. So I decided to wait a little bit on this one and I'm glad that I did because I ended up enjoying the book, but I did not think it was worth the hype that it got. Um, this is the story of an agoraphobic woman who shuts herself away in her house after being in a bad accident and to keep herself entertained, she likes to watch the neighbors. And she befriends this woman who she believes is new to the neighborhood. And one day, through the window, believes that she sees this woman murdered. Um, nobody takes her seriously because of her condition, the fact that she stays in her home and people watches, drinking wine, watching old black and white thrillers, um, the police, and basically anybody that she tells believes that she's getting herself worked up. She's responding to her um, dependence on alcohol and prescription medications believing that it's causing her to hallucinate or that she's flat out making it up for attention. And she begins to doubt herself. She doesn't know if she really saw what she thought she saw, even though she's very insistent about it in the beginning. She does begin to doubt herself. Um, it was a well-written book. I, I will give it that. It was entertaining. It had a good amount of jump scares in it. And like not jump scares in the sense that they were just put in there to uh, to scare you, but there were just there were some scary instances. Um, and I love the way that it plays with your mind because you're you're doubting as much as she's doubting herself. And I I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I do think there were certain things that could have been done a little bit better. Um, I didn't think it was completely unique. I have seen stories like this before, hence why I think it was just a little bit overhyped. But um, I will say that I did figure out the twist in this very, very, very early in. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I gave this a four out of five stars. It's very good. And I will read AJ Finn in the future. So, um, it, but if you would like a full blown review for this, and then leave a comment down below. The next book that I read this month was my favorite of the month, and that is The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I fell absolutely in love with this story. I have never read Ruth Ware before, and I had actually heard a lot of things about The Woman in Cabin 10, which I'm going to be reading this month for the Reading Rush Readathon. 
but I'd never heard of this one. And I actually got this when I was waiting for the other one to come in and I'm like, I'll go ahead and jump into it. It sounds good. And it blew me away. It's not a big book by any means, but it gripped me from page one until the very end. This follows the story of a woman named Hal who has lost her mother three years before. She is in a very dire financial situation. She owes money to loan sharks. She's scared for her life. And she seemingly gets the answer to her prayers. She receives this letter stating that her grandmother has died and she may be a beneficiary to the estate. And... She believes there's a mistake. She believes she knows who her grandmother is and that she like, died before she was even born. But she thinks she can get away with it because it was addressed to her personally and she's in such a desperate situation. She does research, realizes that this family is very rich. The property that this woman had is very abundant and she's like well they can they can spare a few thousand pounds which this this does take place in England but um, she decides to go ahead and go through with it and along the way she discovers that she actually does have ties to this family that she was completely unaware of and she realizes she does not know nearly as much about her mother or her past as she believed she knew and it's got a lot of twists and turns. It constantly keeps you guessing, not knowing what's going to happen next, wondering what's going to go on. I did figure out the twist, but I figured it out much later than I normally do. And I enjoyed it. I believed it was very well written. I gave it a four out of five stars. And the only reason I did not give it five was because it was a little slow starting, which does not bother me. But I do know that with thrillers, some people expect to be gripped right off the bat. So since I am reviewing this for other people, I have to take into account that they might not appreciate that it takes a little while to get going. But I'm telling you, if you stick with it, this book is amazing. And the last book that I read this month is a letdown for me. Because it was actually a reread. I read this in high school originally. And I absolutely loved it. And I thought it was my favorite book by this author. And I've read it now. And I'm realizing how completely wrong I was. And it's disappointing to me. Um, I began reading this in April. In April, guys. And... It just wasn't gripping me. I kept getting annoyed with it and putting it down to read other things. Um, I honestly did not even finish this until today. But I read the bulk of it in June, so I'm still including it. And that is The Guardian by Nicholas Sparks. I normally do really enjoy Nicholas Sparks' writing, but I have to admit... He can be cliche, and a lot of his stories are very similar. What I remembered liking about this one was that it was a thriller, and it was his first thriller at the time, and I liked that he took a chance. He did something different. I remembered believing that he did it really, really well, and I just to remember falling in love with this and I decided it was time to reread it and I was thinking to myself I like it when he does thrillers which he had only done two this one in Safe Haven. Safe Haven has honestly done much better um, but I am seeing why this is one of his few books that was never made into a film. Reading it now as an adult with a critical eye there are just so many problems with it. And I'm ashamed that it took me so long to read this because it is a tiny book. It's 
the premise is good. I appreciate what he was trying to do with it. Um, this is about a woman named Julie who was dating this man a while after the death of her husband. And she decides she doesn't really have a connection with this man. His name's Richard. And breaks it off with him and begins dating a close friend that she's had for years. It was actually friends with her husband as well. And once that happens, Richard goes off the deep end. He loses it and begins to stalk her. Um, parts of this were done very well. Um, the instances where he's creeping up on her and stuff are very, those are very well done. They're gripping. You can tell the guy's definitely psychotic and you feel for her. Um, but this does rely too heavily on the romance angle with her and her friend. And it is an important part of the story. I'm not denying, I'm not saying it shouldn't be there, but it was almost 200 pages into this book before she started being stalked. And I didn't remember it taking that long. Um, but it did. Everything before that was just kind of everyday events. And I found myself wondering, like, why am I reading about this? But let's get to the point. Um, once it got there, it was entertaining. It was just getting there. So this is actually a lot further down on my Nicholas Sparks list than I thought that it was. Um, I still gave it a four out of five stars on Goodreads because of nostalgia. In all honesty, it really should have been a three though. So there's that. <laughs> but that was everything that I read this month. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below if you want a full-blown review for any of these books. And I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.